Hello, my name is Jenny Gannon and I'm a primary school teacher in a senior school teaching children from third class to sixth class. I've been teaching now for 20 years and in those 20 years I've included interculturalism, global citizenship and development education in my classroom. For the last four years I have been working in the ASD class in our school and I believe wholeheartedly that development education is for all children. Children with ASD work best when they have concrete examples of the world around them, when they have everyday representations and they also need the opportunity to work well and engage in active learning. Two themes that we regularly look at in my classroom with our students are similarity and difference and identity and belonging. Both of these themes are key areas in development education and in interculturalism. And both of these areas are key for all of our children working and who have ASD. Both themes offer the opportunity for me as the teacher to provide diverse examples whenever we're discussing it. It is important that diversity is seen in order to be normalised and accepted and also appreciated by our students. When discussing similarities and differences in any topic, um, having still and moving images, enabling the children to actively take part in role play, all works to the advantage of getting them to see what it is that we want them to see in diversity. I find that students with ASD are good at identifying obvious similarities and differences. The challenge is always engaging with them so that they can see how to accept those similarities and differences as they move forward. When exploring the area of identity and belonging, we're ultimately aiming to help the children to understand and gain more knowledge. We're in trying to get them to increase their skills and we also all need to be examining our values and our attitudes. This can't happen if our learners are passive. We must all be engaged in active learning. We must all be actively involved in the topics and the areas that we're looking at in a classroom. Engaging in discussion and group work will all add to that and making sure that we have a diversity perspective is essential. Teaching activities and teachers' activities in a classroom can have a profound effect on learning. Think for a moment of the resources that you use in your room. So for example, getting the children to um, use visual aids such as cartoon pictures or getting them to graphically describe their answers rather than using words. That's extremely helpful for children who have dyslexia or who have speech and language issues. Active learning methods using matching and sequencing activities, storytelling, getting them involved in role play, making 3D models, using picture and video. All of those resources are extremely supportive of children's learning throughout their classroom experience. For many children with ASD and also for those who have emotional and behavioural issues, accepting that other people have a different perspective, a different lived experience, a different understanding of the world can be a challenge. And so always for me, I found that the more of a sensory approach that we can take and an integrated approach that we can take to learning, the better it is for all of our students. Think of, for example, using tactiles and textures and materials in the classroom. Being able to bring that in, being able to show children different examples of textiles from around the world, discussing how the textiles are made, why they were made the way they were made, what function do they hold within a particular community, is all really important. Now obviously some children will have issues with textures and feeling those and the smells that are involved, but allowing the children to see the pictures beforehand, allowing them to see them being made before bringing those objects into the classroom can all help lower that anxiety and support the children as they engage in that educational piece. Experiential learning encourages all of our students to take some responsibility for their own citizenship in the world. 
In order to see that global citizenship, however, and to be that global citizen, they have to see it within our classrooms. We as the teachers are beholden to them to show them that example as we go through every day. We have to think about our displays, our resources, how we treat each of the learners within our classroom. In order for our children to be good global citizens, to go out into the world and create an inclusive society, they need to see that. They need to be able to have experienced it in their own classrooms. The teacher has to be the model. They have to be the example for our children to be able to go out and demonstrate what it is we want to see in the world.